What do you think this Halloween costume is supposed to be? What about this one? Well, I'll tell you in a minute, but let me very quickly run over the history of Halloween in Japan. I'll be fast, I promise. Halloween was apparently brought to Japan by US military personnel in the 80s, but it didn't really pop off until the 90s, helped by theme parks like Tokyo Disneyland hosting gigantic Halloween events. Additionally, a massive annual Halloween parade started in 1997 in Kawasaki. In recent years, however, Halloween has become a bit of a party holiday. There's no trick or treating, just drinking, clubbing, and girls taking pictures of themselves in cute costumes for Instagram. City centers like Shibuya fall into chaos. But in 2014, a company called Daily Portal Z had a new idea to change things up a bit. Its chief editor, Mr. Hayashi, says that after watching people who have one day of the year to finally wear whatever they want, choosing to all go out to Shibuya wearing the exact same costume to frolic around, he had a different idea. He started Jimmy Halloween, Mundane Halloween, to give Japanese people a platform to show off their boring but clever costumes. The costumes are supposed to be so plain that it feels like a quiz to try to guess what they are. It's become incredibly popular in Japan over the past few years. So I'll ask again, what is this costume? You might have gotten that it's a person being covered by sand, but it's not just that, it's actually part of a spa treatment in Japan. So that's what this video is. I combed over all the costumes from this year and years prior to find the best ones to show you. Some of them require Japan-specific knowledge to understand, so I'll be here to explain them. Let's get started. This one is, guy who found a cockroach right before he was about to go to bed. This one is a reference to a very common trend on Japanese TV. Right before a commercial break, a surprise guest will often appear with their face covered by this little graphic so that you have to stick around to see who it was. This guy is wearing the little graphic as a mask. Here we have Keanu Reeves eating alone. This guy, who just barely didn't make it into the thumbnail for this video, is obviously Guy Walking Into the Wind. You might be able to get this one by the clothes. It's middle school kid whose mom bought him a uniform that's too big. This one is someone whose hobby is taking pictures of trains. Hmm, where have we seen someone like that before? You might be able to get this one. It's one of my favorites. She's a free stock photo. Here we have guy who will absolutely not look when you're typing your pin in. This blue change tray is ubiquitous in Japan. You'll see it everywhere you go. Ubiquitous, is that what ubiquitous means? Define ubiquitous. Nice. If you can guess what this guy's costume is supposed to be, I'll actually be impressed, so pause the video if you need some time. Good luck. The answer is corn. If you got it, let me know in the comments, cause I sure didn't. Here we have guy who got his headphones caught when trying to get off the train. This girl did an all right job at person face swapping with Starbucks cup, but this guy absolutely crushed it. There are a lot of costumes related to current events. This guy is Elon Musk at Twitter HQ. And here we have guy who got fired from Twitter. This person, dressed as one of the Van Gogh climate protesters, called their costume person who causes trouble at an art gallery. This girl went as old karaoke music video that doesn't match the lyrics. Having the actual music video on karaoke machines is a relatively recent development in Japan, and there are a lot of songs that still don't have them. For those songs, the machine defaults to these pre-made music videos, oftentimes just random b-roll footage of people walking around or whatever. This girl's costume involves a transparent piece of what appears to be glass, with the lyrics sounding something like a fight between a couple, contrasted with the nice smiling face, recreating the weird feeling mismatch. This one is pretty obvious, guy who shook his carbonated beverage. The mask is incredibly intricate and well designed. This guy is Brazilian soccer player who got injured in the 24th minute of the second half. Why the 24th minute of the second half? I have no clue, I don't watch soccer. But I might, cause Canada's in the World Cup this year, guys! No, just kidding, I'm still not gonna watch. But if you know why his costume is the 24th minute of the second half, let me know in the comments. This is people working at a blood drive. Seeing blood drives going on in Japan is pretty common, especially in places with lots of foot traffic, at least in my experience. By the way, apparently they were able to buy the banner on Amazon. This guy's gimmick is that he goes as background characters from Jojo. This costume was from 2019, here's 2020, and 2021. 
Okay, actually, it turns out he's done like 50 cosplays of random JoJo background characters. I'll put the link to them in the description. This fella just went as Foreigner, and it was received pretty well, actually. This guy is a foreigner who accidentally bought dog food. I've actually heard of this happening before in Japan. Another foreigner costume, this guy went as a tourist who can't find a garbage bin for his empty cans. The lack of garbage bins can be a serious problem for tourists in Japan. The reason for this, in case you didn't know, is because of an event that happened in the 90s where a cult called the Oumu Shinrikyo carried out an attack using the garbage cans. I'm sure there are a ton of videos talking about this on YouTube already, so I'll move on, but you can look them up if you're interested. Here we have a very cute zookeeper with pandas clinging to their legs. A kiwi. A meronpang, which is a well-known Japanese pastry. And a chicken curry. This guy went as the little window where they serve you ramen at the restaurant Ichirang. This is what the real one looks like. This guy's costume is guy who had curry udon for lunch. I'm hungry after looking at these costumes. Here we have guy trying to squeeze out the last bit of toothpaste. I like this one because you see it a lot on the Japanese internet. This masked lady is dressed as person who has their face hidden by a sticker. Japanese people highly value anonymity online, and it's incredibly common to see things like people hiding the face of random strangers who ended up in the background of their selfies, or people showing their face but hiding all of their friends' faces in group pictures. These guys' costume is YouTubers giving an apology after online backlash. Yep, they have online drama in Japan too. Here we have, from left to right, newscaster who is made to report from outside on a rainy day, girl who went outside underprepared despite there being a typhoon, and live coverage of a typhoon. Typhoons are a big thing in Japan. I'll tell a typhoon story at the end of the video. This girl's costume is person who is about to get on the Kodama bullet train. The Kodama is the slowest bullet train, taking almost four hours to go from Tokyo to Osaka compared to the norm of two and a half hours. That's why she has all the snacks and alcohol ready. Why would anyone ride this, you might ask? Well, luckily I've ridden it, so I can answer. A lot of people use a system called Puratto Kodama, which is a way to buy discount tickets on the Kodama, so it can be significantly cheaper than other methods of transportation. Furthermore, the fastest bullet trains actually don't stop at certain stations in between, so sometimes you have to ride the Kodama. This guy's costume is obviously guy with the longest fingernails in the world. I remember seeing the guy he's emulating in my Guinness Book of World Records as a kid. Shout out to everyone who got the Guinness Book of World Records for Christmas as a kid. This person is dressed up as, no, it's not Mr. Peanut, it's the logo for Komeda Coffee, which is a large chain of cafes in Japan. You might think this guy's costume is a key, but no, I'm just kidding, yeah, he's a key. This guy is doing the Chunibyo pose from this famous Japanese meme picture. For a more in-depth explanation about this very important Japanese concept, please check out my video, The Most Shocking Japanese Internet Mystery. You might be able to guess this one. It's Google Street View. Have you seen the Netflix show Old Enough? It's a famous Japanese show where they send a young child to do an errand unsupervised and record it. That's what this costume is. The two people in the back have cameras, with one of them disguising theirs in a cardboard box. By the way, apparently these three people all came to the event separately and didn't know each other. They all just had similar inspiration for their costume. What do you think this girl's costume is? If you guessed person who is working from home but only wears the top half of their uniform, you're correct. I know you can get this one. He's soy sauce. Remember three videos ago when I told you about the Japanese restaurant Yayoiken and how they have unlimited rice refills? This guy's costume is guy who is looking for the rice refill at Yayoiken. Wow, he's literally me. I asked my Japanese friend for full context on this one. She says that after every semester of Japanese school, students must bring all their things home. In the summer semester of elementary school, students grow a morning glory flower, and when the semester ends, they bring it home for the summer. This guy's costume is an elementary school kid who failed to bring everything home little by little over the days prior, and now has to bring everything home at once on the final day. Remember this, Mr. Hayashi who made this whole tradition? He went as a level 10 mafia right-hand man. Yes, they had those dumb <laughs> phone game ads in Japan too. Yep. And finally, this one. This one is fun. 
These people are dressed as a commercial for basically magnifying reading glasses, mostly for old people. It's called Hazuki Rupe, and it's pretty famous. The commercial they're emulating is starring Kikukawa Rei and Watanabe Kang. Yes, that's the guy from Inception. The commercials are famous for being a little bit, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I went a little too far with the edit. <laughs> Let me know. I checked the Nikopedia article for Hazuki Dupe and it's hilarious. It starts with really tiny, unreadable text and then says a quote right from the commercial It's too small, I can't read it. But if you put on Hazuki Dupe, and then it has massive font for the rest of the article. Hazuki Dupe has always been one of my favorite Japanese memes, so I'm happy I got to finally include it in a video. Alright, I promised a typhoon related personal story, right? Japan gets a few typhoons every summer, and in 2013, I was about to experience my first. Everyone I talked to would bring it up non stop, and all my friends cancelled all of our plans for the days surrounding the typhoon, so I was expecting a natural disaster. I was living in the most run down apartment you can possibly imagine. It was super old, cockroaches everywhere, mold in the walls, but the rent was $200 a month, and I was too young to care about the other stuff. Anyways, I thought the entire building was going to collapse from the typhoon. I was frightened. Once it came though, it made me feel like an idiot. It was honestly just some rain. Fast forward a few years, and I was in Osaka for the summer, and I had a second date planned with a girl that I was really excited to see when the typhoon came again. It was a relatively light typhoon, this time too, so I shot my shot and asked if she was down to meet up anyways. She surprisingly said yes, and we ended up spending the evening walking around in the heavy rain, popping in and out of bars and restaurants. Yes, we did get completely drenched, but honestly, it was the closest I've ever been to a scene from a romance movie. We got to experience a summer evening in Shinsaibashi, one of the busiest parts of Osaka, completely devoid of people. Under incredible weather conditions. I wouldn't recommend underestimating typhoons in general, though. It's not a good idea. They can hit Japan really hard. I just got lucky. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. If you're desperate for Japan Alice's content, I actually do upload unscripted content on my Patreon sometimes. I have three videos on there right now, with more coming in the future, and it's available for only three fifty. Shout out to patrons Jason the Artist and Andre Schneider. Oh, yeah. And shout out to the YouTuber Sumito Media for shouting me out randomly a few months ago and mentoring me behind the scenes. Quick shout out to the YouTube channel Japan Analysis, which I discovered just last week. He's such a nice guy. See you next time, everyone. Thanks for watching.